Hi, this is Eric Elder, and I'd like to give you an introduction to Zoom, just a very uh, simple overview, how you start with Zoom, how you interact with Zoom. And I have several friends here helping me out, and they can all say hi if you all want to wave and uh, do our Brady Bunch. Hello. Perfect, perfect, wonderful. So glad you're all here. And uh, we're going to take a little tour through Zoom, uh, just starting with the very first basics, how someone would actually set up to be a host. If someone wants to be a guest or a participant in your room, they don't have to set up an account or anything. They just have to receive the ID. So you can just send them a link to your Zoom room, and so they can just join that way. But uh, if you want to actually host a meeting, you'll have to go through a step by going to zoom.us. So I'm going to open a new browser here and type zoom.us and on the top right of my screen it says sign up it's free I'm going to type in an email address and click sign up then it says we sent a link to you and so I'm going to check my email and you'll see an email there from zoom saying please activate your zoom account Click Activate Account, and it will take you to Zoom. It says, enter your name, and a password, and click Continue. Then you're ready to start a meeting. You can just uh, schedule a meeting, join a meeting, or host a meeting. So you want to host a meeting with video on. It says allow pop-ups and then it says connecting and now I'm hosting a meeting. This is using my personal ID and click here to invite participants. You can just click here. You can invite people from your contact list. You can send an email or at the bottom you can copy the URL or copy an invitation and then just go to your email compose a new email I'll just type in here Zoom meeting at 7 p.m. Here's the link. And you can send that link out to people. Push send, and then you'll be able to have them have that link to your Zoom meeting. Then whenever they want to join, they can join. They can either join instantly or they can join later. I'm going to pop up a new window here so you can see me while I talk to you. You can schedule a meeting just by clicking schedule. Give it a name. This says Eric Elder Zoom meeting and a date. Let's say we want to do it today at 4 p.m. for one hour till 5. And you have a choice of using your personal meeting ID. I would only use this for people who you're in contact with regularly and want an instant meeting with often. Uh, but rather than give your personal ID out, because anyone could join any meeting that you have that way, I would say generate a meeting ID automatically. And that will generate an ID just for this meeting. You can still use this later. You could have a recurring meeting using that same ID, but at least it's not giving out your personal ID, which you might reserve for more personal uh, meetings. You could require a password, but I usually turn that off to make it easier. And on the video settings, I turn on the host video. That's me, so I want people to see me. And the participants, I turn their videos on by default also. For their connections, I usually turn on telephone and computer. They could either dial in, with certain types of Zoom accounts, or they could use their computer audio. And then you can add it to people's calendars, Outlook or Google Calendar. There are a few advanced options. Enable Join Before Host, I would turn on. That allows people to join your meeting, say, five minutes before, ten minutes, whenever they arrive, and they can all chat with each other even if you haven't arrived yet. If you don't have that turned on, then uh, they all have to wait for you to arrive and get permission to enter the meeting. You have an option to mute the participants as soon as they come in. I would save this for larger meetings. Uh, you probably don't need it for a smaller meeting. And then you can say record this meeting automatically, either locally or on the cloud. Say you want to record the meeting so that other people can watch later who have missed the meeting. You can also set some other people as alternative hosts. Then you just click schedule the meeting. And it's scheduling. And now I have that, and I can send that link. You'll see it's generated a link and an email for me. I can just copy and paste that link, or I could go ahead and send that meeting invite out, depending on your mail system.
But that link is the way that people can connect. So people can connect with you on tablets, computers, phones, uh, any kind of device, it works. Uh, and so it's nice that you can have people join in various ways. You can also schedule a recurring meeting. You could click this button and it just says click recurring meeting and it'll just uh, put it in your Zoom account. I've got several recurring meetings here in my own. Here are my upcoming meetings. And I have an online campus meeting, I have a family room meeting, I have a Monday morning mastermind, a writer's group meeting. And I can go to any of those and it tells what the dates and the times are that those groups meet. And they all have different links, so that way it makes it nice uh, so I don't get crossover between the groups if they happen to click on the wrong link at the wrong time. Now that we're in the room, I want to show you a few features that we have here. There's a chat on the side, and I just click the button and pop it up, and I see Stuart has said something. Jason, what are you eating? And Jason could reply over there on the side without interrupting me as a main speaker. Cinnamon rolls, he says, from Sugar Mamas. Great, and so he, they're just typing. I'm gonna type a hello over here, and I'm gonna send it to everyone. Or I can use a drop-down menu and say I want to send Barry Clark, and it says privately, hi Barry. And then Barry and I could have a private conversation. So if you just have a question for someone and you don't want to interrupt the whole meeting, you can do that. I'm going to ask you all to unmute yourselves now. There's a mute button if you just hover over your screen. This is going to be dangerous for me. All four kids are now upstairs. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> So you can stop your video. I'm just hovering over the three dots on my window and clicking stop video. Now it just shows my name rather than showing me. So if I need to take care of some business, you have some issues going on, uh, or you just would rather not show your face, it's six in the morning and uh, it's not time yet to wake up. Click that button, feel free to try that out and you can uh, stop your video. You can also mute yourself. I'm going to start my video again and the mute button is right next to it so I can mute and no one else can hear me like Jason right now. <laughs> and it says uh, to come back in. Oh, there I am. I'm back in. There's also a way to share your screen with other people. So I'm going to share my screen right now down at the bottom here. It's different on the iPad, different on a tablet, different on a phone. There are different places, but I'm going to click share. Maybe you want to share a video with people. I'm going to share my whole desktop. I'm going to show you guys a brand new television spot that we filmed that's going to start airing on NBC and ABC tomorrow for Eastview Church here in our 10 county McLean County area. It's rather exciting. We filmed three of these spots Sunday after church and we're going to air these throughout the week as well as live during the sermon and tell people just click on eastview.church/tv and they can watch. Here's a 15 second video. Hey, it's Pastor Mike at Eastview Christian Church. We believe that Eastview is for anyone, anytime, anywhere. You can watch us live on Sundays or play back throughout the week at eastview.church. tv. Join us now and see what Jesus can do for you. That's how you can share a video. So maybe you could share a video of uh, your small group, maybe from Right Now Media, maybe a, a video that you want to share for the whole group to watch. You can share other things on your screen. This is also a handy way if someone's having computer problems, have them share the screen. They can give control to you and you can help them out. I also have a button that I want to show you. If you have a paid plan, uh, that's quite nice. It's called Breakout Rooms. And uh, this doesn't work in the free plan, but in any of the paid plans, you can click this Breakout Room and you can split up everyone into smaller groups. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to click the Breakout Room button. And it's asking me, assign eight participants into two rooms and you can change that you could assign them into three rooms you could assign them into four rooms which would have and it tells you how many people are in each room i'm going to do eight participants in two rooms and so that way we can split up and you guys can talk amongst yourselves and i'm going to click create breakout rooms and then open all rooms it shows who's in each room if you don't want someone in a certain room or you want to make sure there's a certain person in a room, you can click move to or exchange with someone else. And I'm going to click open all rooms. And this is a random opening all the rooms. Now as a speaker, I don't, I'm not in a room, so I'm going to join a room. And I'm going to join room two. Oh, 
fun. Hey. Hey, guys. Oh, Eric's here. Did you move yourself? <laughs> As a host, you have a choice to uh, join either room. Since there were nine of us, it went four and four, and the host can pop in from room to room. If each you're of you spying want. On. Go ahead. <laughs> I said you're spying on us. <laughs> That's right. Uh, now it's flipping from screen to screen, so maybe if someone, Jason, you want to say something again? Uh, yes, just saying, hey, thanks for trying this out. Stay patient with it. It will work. We've had great success with it with our teams and with groups already. Great. And you can see how it switches to Jason there. Karis, would you like to say something? Hi, everyone. Perfect. Danielle, anything? Hello. Welcome. Perfect. And Zach? Really creative with just hello, guys. Uh, so, uh, uh. <laughs> Perfect. So you can see how it uh, works, and you can go to gallery view or and see everyone, or you can go back to speaker view and just see the main speaker voice activated. I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. I'm going to click the breakout room button again and say close all rooms. And that gives a notice that says all breakout rooms will close in 60 seconds. And that's sending a note to everyone in all their other rooms saying they're being moved out of the room. And I'm going to leave this room myself and return to the main session. Coming. There, there, there it is. And everyone says, is back together. It says we're back in the main session. And uh, we can share a few things about uh, how was breakout room uh, number one. Uh, anything, any one comment from breakout room one? Uh, Roy? It's interesting having stored. Because there's a lot of entertainment going on. <laughs> <laughs> there is. It is a nice to have that because you can break that segment off and it's a little easier with multiple, you know, smaller audience to speak together if you've got a question you're working through. So I did like that feature. Great. And anything, Danielle, from your breakout room that you'd like to share? Yeah, we were just really creative. Lots of good stuff shared in there. <laughs> Perfect. So you can see how you could use this. Maybe you could start a meeting. <laughs> all together, take some time in the middle of the meeting to break out uh, into smaller groups of any size, and then come back together at the end of the meeting, share something from each of the groups, and uh, close with a prayer. One way to do uh, a meeting. There's also a record button here, and if I click record, it will say record on this computer or record to the cloud, so you can record your meeting. So you're, some of your participants can't be there, or you want to record it for some historical purpose, or for instance, like we're doing today for a training video, just click record on this computer or record to the cloud and you can start your recording. There's also a manage participants button and uh, in this button you can see all the other people. You can mute people as a host here. So if I wanted to mute everyone I could mute all the people and maybe that would help if you have a very large meeting. You can also uh, see people's cameras. You can mute their camera, mute their sound. Also, if someone raises their hand, uh, anyone or all of you want to raise your hand, there's a button they can raise their hand. And I can see here that Danielle, Sarah, Barry, all these people have raised their hand. They want to talk. Everybody wants to talk today. Amazing. I'm going to click lower hand on Jason and unmute him and say, Jason, what would you like to say? Just thanks again for doing this, Eric. This is really helpful. Perfect. When you're ready to end the meeting, you can just click end meeting at the bottom and you have the choice here to leave the meeting and everyone else can keep talking or end the meeting for all. So if I click end the meeting for all, everybody's going to get knocked off. If I just click leave the meeting, they can keep talking for as long as they want. All right, so that's a lot of stuff. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you enjoy using Zoom. This has been Eric Elder and friends in the small group area and young adults here at Eastview. Remember, social distancing does not mean isolation. Let's stay connected. Everybody want to say goodbye?